earth moving equipments are being deployed into the territory. So I'd like you to shout a very big, big hallelujah one more time. respect and greetings to our fathers in the labor of the gospel. And the principal officers of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. It's a great privilege to stand out here tonight. And I believe that God has summoned us together to do us good. Please, you may be seated. I just want to give us a brief announcement concerning the meeting tomorrow. So, I want to Tomorrow is the healing night and the Lord has promised that his healing power will be more than enough so this is what you will do first option is you can bring the sick person here the second option is you can load your phone with credit and so that when the healing moment comes you can call the sick person and connect so that for people that cannot make it to this place the healing power of god will be sent to them wherever they are on the face of the earth whether they are in they are in uh, taraku in Abuja, Abuja pa. in Lagos, Lagos pa. in California, California pa. the healing power of God will move through your device and uh, deliver uh, the healing of God to the people on the other side. But tonight is a night of deliverance. But and the hand of God will be stretched forth and yokes will be broken this night in the oh, name of Jesus. If you came with your Bible, turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 5. Mark, Mark chapter 5. And they came over onto the other side of the sea. Into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of a tombs. A man with an unclean spirit, whom had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains because he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and fetters broken in pieces neither could any man bind him and always in the night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw Jesus afar off and he he ran and worshipped him so, and, uh, yeah, and the hallelujah Amen. now because of our time we'll just take uh, that portion of the scripture to deliver the package of heaven whenever you visit a country 
and you come either to the airport or to other ports into the country the first government personnel that you are likely to encounter is the immigration the immigration personnel will demand for your passport and will admit you into the nation if you have all the requirements available jesus had just finished a massive event and he said the next point of call is the other side of the sea it was as if the kingdom of darkness was aware of the kind of commotion that will come if Jesus makes it true to the other side. The first thing that happened was that there was a dispatchment of a strange kind of wind which was supposed to discourage Jesus and his team from coming over to the other side. Well, eventually when they succeeded coming to the other side, the immigration officer of the other side had his dwelling in the tomb. The personnel that was supposed to admit them into the territory officially uh, was was a madman that gives us an insight about the territory that jesus was coming into the terrain was overtaken by the influence of dark forces and dark spirits and the scriptures took a while to give us an insight into this man and the palliatives that were put in place to ensure that his situation never escalated but no one could tame him because his situation was spiritual you know when i got married i my suit was white colored white and uh, i have kept that suit in a very exclusive position uh, in my inventory in my um inventory <laughs> it came to pass seven years after my wedding that i decided to wear that suit to church and all the memories of my wedding day began to come back one after the other i was on holiday and on break from preaching i wanted to spend time with my family that was what was on the agenda and someone came to visit and knocked at the door say i'm looking for the pastor meanwhile i was the one that opened the door and the person was still looking for the pastor that means the person doesn't know the pastor so we need to find out how the person got information about this location to be my house while i was about to subject them to very tactical interrogation a call came from kaduna from a friend of mine he said sorry for interrupting your privacy but i sent those people to your house please attend to them and uh, i now asked what the problem was and they said it was a woman that was speaking he said my son is in the psychiatric hospital and i was wondering why um the 
the son's son being in the psychiatric hospital was uh, was my business i just wanted to spend the break with my family and this was the story that led to the young man being in the psychiatric hospital he was told by a friend of his that uh, there is a certain fraternity a cult that he could enter and he will conquer his financial situation the leader of the order of that cult normally appears somewhere around the bank of river benue on wednesdays in the night so his subjects and the people in the court will be waiting for his appearance it was in one of those meetings that this young man who happened to be a student at university of agriculture was brought in and when he was brought into the fold the process that is normally done in order to admit a new anticipated member was unveiled and uh, it happens to be that in the protocol of membership you will have to break one of the ten commandments um that is is that the spirit himself will choose for you and is in his own case when the die was cast it fell on adultery well he felt that was not going to be a very difficult task until the the spirit still spoke and gave some specifics about the act of adultery that he has to commit that he has to sleep with his mother hallelujah Amen. and he had 14 days to deliver upon that instruction and there were two likely outcomes if by any means he fails the first outcome is that he will die the second outcome is that he can run mad so he left the meeting because his mother is a widow that died years ago and the mother was the only one that was on ground to fend for the family so the instruction he was given was quite emotional and it's likely to be difficult for him to carry it out seeing the efforts that the mother is making to make ends meet for the family well, having received encouragement from his friend who happens to be a member of the fraternity already he he braced himself if you are still with me say amen he braced himself up made an attempt but he couldn't get himself to deliver first, first day passed second day passed third day passed fourth day passed fifth day passed sixth day passed tenth day passed eleventh day Pass. Twelfth day passed. On the thirteenth day, he called his mother. He said, "I have joined something." The details of what I joined is withheld. But they, they told me to sleep with you as a means of gaining chartered membership. The reason why I'm communicating with you now is because of my inability to prosecute the instruction. 
I was told that there are two likely options that will befall me because of my failure. They said the first likely option is death. And if I die, you are free. But they said the second likely option is madness. And if that becomes my case, please, as a mother, do not sleep until you bring me deliverance. So the mother agreed and cried. 12 noon on the 14th day, the young man began to hit his head on the wall. Uh, they, it, it started as if it was a joke and after a while it became intense he became violent he lost his mind in fact the drugs that are normally administered for schizophrenic and bipolar patients were given to him but it had no effect so they put him in the corner in the psychiatric hospital if you are still with me say amen that day was christmas day i still had my white suit on when we went to the psychiatric hospital when i got to the psychiatric hospital I saw a young man. He, this was his. This was how he was standing. Until I left there, he was. He was like, <laughs> Demons have done damage to the sons of men. <laughs> and when I got there, we were looking for our patient. I heard his name was Sunday, so where I was asking Sunday. And I found him at a corner. He was striking his head at the wall. Hallelujah. Amen. I said Sunday. Sunday. He answered me, but he continued. Pop, pop, pop. And his mother began to cry. Then I started the deliverance in the hospital. Then, A psychiatric clinic, which is opposite um, Government College, Makode. And I said, in the name of Jesus, Satan, leave this one. Something happened. The people that were mad began to manifest massively, including Sunday. And when the doctor came, it was not the demons the doctors cast out. It was me. They cast me out of the entire world. I, what I saw where was a fellowship of demons. But when the doctor came, he called it pathology. It's pathology. They were trying to manage a spiritual situation by chemical and medical means. Since I was cast out from the world, and there was no way for me to get back because they threatened that if I come back, they will call the police. So I told the family, go and get somebody discharged. And when I said I should discharge Sunday, the elders in the family who was there, a white beard man, said, how can a small boy that doesn't have beard instruct on how this matter should be addressed? So when I saw that there was contention in the family, I drove off. I said, if you succeed in discharging Sunday, take him to our 
prayer place and alert me from home and I left them. I left them at 12 noon. They discharged Sunday by 4 p.m. And the elder had threatened that if Sunday, if anything happens to Sunday, the mother will be held responsible in the village. So they got back by 4 p.m. And then we went to see Sunday in our prayer place. And as I was walking towards Sunday, the angel of the Lord touched me on my right hand. It was quite comforting to know that there was reinforcement, there was support from heaven. Sunday, Sunday had not slept for 10 days. As at the time that we were attending to him. Laid hands on him as instructed. Spoke to the spirit to leave him. And Sunday slept in my hands. We allowed him to sleep. Asked the family to buy Lucozet. 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 So that he, he, his energy can be boosted. Woke up after six hours. Drank Lucozet. Asked ask for pounded yam. Luam. He asked for Luam. And after taking pounded yam, he slipped, uh, w fell into sleep again. Slept for another four hours. When he woke up, we led him to Christ. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. And we took him through night vigil. Yes, his first night vigil. The, fam the family wanted to take him. I said, No, he's still on admission. Still on, <laughs> still on admission. So he said, He has to do three night vigils before we will we'll be sure that when the demons come again, he can contend. On the, on the third day he was discharged from our intensive care unit went back to uni agri and graduated as, as a mechanical engineer tonight if there is a yoke on you it will be broken the hand of God will be stretched forth so mightily and every yoke, every encumbrance of darkness will be broken. If you are here, say Amen. The Bible says about this man that his dwelling was among the tombs. There are so many choices of where he would have stayed. But the most convenient atmosphere for him was the light of the day. The Bible says that no man could bind him. Not even with chains. You know, sometimes some people's condition have been diagnosed to be spiritual and human beings try to use physical things to tame to control it you will have no results there were attempts at administering palliatives to bring a balance to the situation but it didn't work because the situation was spiritual the Bible also gives us an account of the attempts that were made. Fetters of steel, bars of iron were used to pin him down. 
to know a veil in verse 5 an account of the situation was adequately captured the bible says and always in the night and in the day he was found on the mountains and in the tombs always crying and cutting himself with stone I began to investigate why he was crying. You see, a human being was designed as a vessel. Your spirit is a one bedroom flat. Only one spiritual personality can occupy that space. Some time ago, I stayed in Lagos in, in an estate called Games Village. The roof of Games Village is, is five foot nine. And I'm, I'm six foot two. I'm six foot two inches. It means it was not designed for a man like me. If I want to wear my shirt sometimes and I stretch like this, the fan will pick up my finger. Even though your spirit is a one bedroom flat, it was not designed for Satan. It was designed as an accommodation for God. Because man was created in the image and in the likeness of God. Created to be able to contact God, to be able to contain God, and to manifest God. So when a human being is possessed by devils, the environment, the spirit accommodation was not designed for devils. So once in a while, the influence of the devil will not be complete over that life. If you stay long enough around someone that is possessed, you will see moments of reflection where the person's soul is the one describing his situation. No man can be 100% possessed of the devil. You always find those moments where it is the real person that is, is speaking about his ordeal under the tyrant Satan. The Bible says always he was seen night and day in the mountains and in the tombs crying but cutting himself with stone and when the devil wants to destroy your life he gives you a stone a stone of fornication you don't like it but you, your will doesn't have enough authority to, to give you freedom from his grip. Night and day, you are cutting yourself with fornication. Cutting yourself with stealing. During the moments of reflection, you will hear the person say, I don't want to remain in this immoral life. Because a spirit is involved, a new year resolution cannot re revolutionize your life.
the Bible says he was crying. But his emotional expression did not stop what the devil was doing. Yet he caught himself. If you were to conduct an interview of this man during those sober moments, he would have said, Oh my God, I'm in captivity. I'm in bondage. Satan has decided to put a yoke on my life. He knows exactly what is happening, but he cannot change his condition. Always on the mountain and in the tombs, the Bible says, He cried. Those days in Venus State University, I had a roommate that must smoke. He must, he must smoke. He must smoke. Every day he must pull on the cigarette. He knows he's wrong. He's tired of smoking. But he cannot stop the act of smoking. In fact, he told me that he cannot even go to the toilet without a stick of cigarette. That was the situation of this man. He was very aware of his predicament. But the ability to change his situation was no longer in his hands. Jesus just finished a very successful meeting and he left a crowd to look for an individual. The surprising thing was that when Jesus came on the shores of the other side, this madman, he ran towards Jesus and he bowed down and worshipped him. The demons in him didn't stop him from bowing down. The darkness in him didn't stop him from making obeisance to the master. That's why I know that every man has an opportunity to make a choice about Jesus. Doesn't matter how much of affliction you are going through, you have the, the power. You cannot change your situation, but you have the power to make a choice. was heavily possessed with devils but he had the ability to worship Jesus the story of the deliverance of this man was tied to the fact that he chose Jesus you can't be bound but choose Jesus you can be sick but choose Jesus you can be operating under the curse, but choose Jesus. The Bible says he ran and he worshiped. Oh my God, tonight you will have an opportunity to make a choice. The demons can't stop you from making a choice. The devils of immorality can't stop you from making a choice. You may not have the power to stop their exploitation but you can make a job it is Jesus that has the authority to take the stones out of your hand just like many people came to stone a woman that was caught in the heart of adultery when Jesus was done with them all of them dropped their stones you are about to drop your stones right now. I say you are about to drop your stones. Right now. Jesus comes to Boko tonight to collect stones. 
born collector is in town. You may not be able to stop your situation, but you can make a choice and say, I choose Jesus. Doesn't matter how far you have gone with the devil. You can choose Jesus. You can choose Jesus. The life of everyone in this field tonight is a function of whether or not they chose Jesus. In, in a few moments, you will be given the opportunity to make a talk. Remember, no devil can stop you from making a talk. The Bible says this impossible man, he ran of his own free will. He bowed himself before Jesus and worshipped. The wordings of his worship were not captured in scripture. The vocalities of his worship were not captured. But he worshiped all the same. Friends, tonight it is time to worship. It is in this worship that he was able to cast away the stone. He was able to cast away the fornication. He was able to cast away that which was an enemy to his soul. It's time to worship Jesus. You may stand on your feet quickly. It's time to worship. And I want to address someone in the crowd or someone that is listening to my voice online. Those stones you've been carrying, 12 years, 8 years, 14 years, you've been cutting yourself around, smoking away your life, stones of fornication. You tried to stop, you stopped, you stopped for two weeks, and after two weeks, you come back again and and made up for the time that you stopped. I came to tell you that the spirit is involved. That's why your will no longer has the authority to orchestrate a change in your life. But when Jesus came, when Jesus came, the Bible says 